just want to say uh, a great crowd today. Um, you know, Skull Session was rocking um, and, and a great crowd. So uh, what a great way to start the season. Uh, and then also, again, just another shout out to uh, Archie Griffin. You know, I said it during the ceremony. You know, you talk about the impact that uh, a person's made in his life. And you know, they've been playing college football a long time. There's only one two-time Heisman Trophy winner, and that's Archie Griffin. But to me, and I didn't get a chance to see him play, but I did um, get a chance to see the impact he made off the field with people in the community, with charities, and uh, just have so much respect for what he's done on the field, but also off the field. And he's a great role model for our team. So congrats to him on his recognition this weekend. We're going to open up questions over to the left. Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Ryan, until you see Will Howard in action in the right. shoe, you don't, you don't know exactly. Yeah. Now you have a much better idea. What did you like specifically about what he did? Where's a little area where, okay, we're going to keep working on that? I mean, I'm going to watch the film and, and, and kind of make that determination. Um, I, I thought he had pretty good poise the whole day. He took care of the football other than the one crazy decision there you know, at, uh, at the end of the half there to try to force something. Actually, he's got to take a deep breath on that. But, um, you know, for your first start in the shoe, now he is a, a more experienced guy, but he's in a new offense and new – environment. Um, I'll say this overall, I felt like early on, you know, the three inside guys, you know, they hadn't played in this, you know, Seth and Austin first start, Tegra, Jeremiah, Will, um, you know, Quinn Sean's first time playing here. And, and I think just across the board, there was just, you know, they, they were a little uptight early on. I think, you know, they were kind of worked up. And you just saw a couple things off and uh, we got ourselves off schedule. I thought Chip did a nice job of continually pushing the run. You could see that start to take its effect in the second half. And then I thought we, we sort of settled in and started to have more fun. And, and kind of, you know, we started to play with a little, little looser, uh, which is the way we need to play. And um, I, I thought we were a little bit uptight early on. And, and you know, we can't play like that. We've got to uh, come out of the gates, you know, playing loose. But, um, but I get it. And so we're going to get on the film and grow from there. But for, for a lot of these guys, it's a start and their first start. So, and then also a, a, um, good to see some, some younger guys towards the end get in there and play. And, and those guys are in there like to play. And it's not just to eat up reps. And it's not just to build depth for the future. It's also because there are metrics in, in play here for the playoffs that we have to make sure that we're um, you know, a part of in terms of offense and defense. And so um, those guys have been told that. And I thought they did go in there and compete towards the end. Over here to the right, Austin Ward. And then it'll go to Spencer. Ryan, it seemed like a, a great coaching decision to let Jeremiah play through those uh, early mistakes there uh what did you make of his debut you tried not to talk about him too much in august but he ended on a pretty good note yeah um you can see the talent and like you said we're going to play right through just about all of it um you know I, I think he's another guy i mean you know sometimes you look at him you don't even think he's quite human but he is and um you know he's going to make a few early mistakes but not very many um you can see the talent there and uh, he's going to sleep good tonight, though, I can tell you that. And I, I think they all need to get some rest tonight. It was a long week. It was a hot week. We practiced really hard. We practiced Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in pads, physical for a reason. And, uh, and it was hot out there today, but that's good. It was hard. And um, they'll sleep good tonight, and we'll get back at it tomorrow. Over to the left, Cameron Teague Robinson, The Athletic. Ryan, kind of off that. Oh, you left. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you kind of off that. You talk a lot about wanting to see players fight through advers adversity. What does it say about Jeremiah? It's so so young that he's able to put those two plays in the first drive away and still put the day, the day he had together. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's built different. He is um, just the way his approach is. You can see his size and speed and all that. But typically, somebody with that type of talent doesn't have the discipline, the focus that he does. Um, you know, and so uh, you know, nobody even batted an eye. I mean, not, nobody said a word. Like it was like he's just going to play through this, and we're going to be fine. It wasn't even consideration because we see what he does every day in practice, and we knew he was going to settle in. Over here to the right, uh, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Ryan, the run game looked like it was a little, I don't know, clunky in the first half. How do you grade that, knowing that, like you said, the three guys on the interior were, were new, and then Quinchon Travion, kind of that duo. But how do you grade the run game today before you watch the film? Yeah, uh, when I looked at the numbers at halftime, I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was. I think, I think Trey was averaging six yards a carry, and Quinchon was just under four. And then it looked much better in the second half. Um, I, I just think there was some things off in there uh, on the interior. Guys, you know, just weren't quite fitting it up right. We weren't that far off. I thought schematically we had some good ideas in what we were doing. Um, and, and there was a couple of runs that maybe we could have hit better uh, at running back. But I just think that we were just not great in the fits early on. And I think 
you know, you have to ask those guys. They seemed like they were pressing a little bit uh, early on again, but but then I thought they really settled in a little bit. You know, I thought Chip called a good game. I really do. I think that you know he he knew he knows what he wants to get done with this team. He wants to establish this run, and that means you know maybe that's not scoring you know seventy or whatever. You know, but we need to establish the run late in the season. So we're going to do that, um, and you know the quarterback's going to be a part of it, and. Um, so I don't know how to grade it. I got to watch the film and see. Well, the good thing is I actually get to watch some of the film during the game now. So I can't just always say I'm going to wait till tomorrow to make a decision. So I did see some of it, and it wasn't all great. Uh, it wasn't all bad either, though. Uh, folks, we're going to do one more question for Coach. I'll do multiple questions for Coach, but one more. And then I'm bringing Lathan Ransom in. I'm sending him to the far back table. So if you have anything on that back table, please clean it off. Um, over here to the left, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, last year's defense was good in a lot of ways, but didn't create a lot of turnovers, um, not a lot of sacks. You had a bunch of sacks in the first half. You had the two you know, scores. How important was it to, for the defense to, to do that today? Yeah, it was great. Uh, I thought that, you know, the, Joe had a pretty good plan of getting the ball out of the quarterback's hand quickly, and that can eliminate the um, you know, can eliminate the pass rush quickly and tire the, the front. But, uh, I thought our guys did a good job of getting their, their hands on some stuff and make that adjustment. But then I know we tightened up some coverage a little bit and made them, you know, hold on to it a few times. And, and so then, you know, we were able to hit, get home with it. I thought the effort play by Caden Curry was, was tremendous to come back around because that wasn't, you know, as I remember it, it wasn't like, you know, uh, you know, a sack, you know, in the first second or two of the play. I mean, it was a scramble step up. He was kind of towards the line of scrimmage and then he retraced back with a great effort play and knocked the ball out. And that's something we talk a lot about when you're talking about turnovers. We did a quick study about the college and the NFL. And one of the big percentage of turnovers is strip sacks on the quarterback, uh, whether he's in the pocket or coming out of the pocket. And that was a great one. And then the other study that we did is just, you know, on fumbles uh, and, you know, how we want to, you know, handle those. You know, if we're in tight areas, we want to get on them. If we get them open, open areas, we're scooping and scoring. And there's an art to that. And we practice that every Tuesday. But then I also thought there was some really good block set up on that play as well. I thought the tip ball, you know, Gabe made a really nice play on the ball. Uh, that was just kind of a more athletic play. But uh, ball disruption is something we spent some time on this offseason and ball security. You know, if we're going to win, you know, these, these games, we've got to make sure that we're winning the, the um, ball security and turnover, um, you know, part of the game. But yeah, anytime you get a defensive score, uh, that's huge. And, you know, you, you could see we were close to in, in a couple of the returns. You know, I mean, we're, we're working at it. And uh, we were just a one or two away. I don't know what, what Brandon's uh, return yardage was, but uh, you can see there's some potential back there. We got a bunch of guys buying into that, and, and we, we're getting there. I mean, it was better today than I, I remember it in the past. And so uh, we'll keep working on that because if we can get some special team scores, defensive scores, that can be a huge part of our season. Over here to the right, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Sonny was ready to be your starting will linebacker, then he gets thrust into playing that mic with yeah. Cody out. I guess just what stood out to you about him today and just how impressive it is that he's ready to go do that and be that green dot guy for you in a, in a pinch. Well, here's a guy who went from safety to linebacker to will and then had to move to Mike when you know Cody was down, you know, hoping to get Cody back next week. We'll see how this week goes. But um, very impressed with playing his real first game at linebacker in a position that he really hadn't been training at for the majority of spring and fall. Um, he's very conscientious, very smart, and um, you know handled that very, very well. Over to the left, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, how, how close was Donovan to, to being available? Just what's his status? And then what led to the switch at, at punter as well? I know you're planning to start Nick and then switch to Joe. Yeah. Um, Donnie, I, he's going to have a full week, full week next week. We plan on him playing next week. Uh, if he doesn't, then you know that means he has had a setback. But we want to be smart. We know it's a long season. Uh, he was you know really all over us about getting, you know, getting back. But we're only going to do it when, when we feel like, you know, the trainers uh, give them the full go on that. Stephen uh, Means, Cleveland. Uh, I just com. I got to hit the punter oh, part. Yep, yeah, my bad. But the, so, yeah, so um, going into it, uh, I, you know, going into uh, last week, I felt like Nick was ahead of Joe. Uh, Joe had a, a much better week of practice leading up to it, significant. And we felt like um, Joe's experience in the program, being here for a year, um, it was better. We probably could have given Nick one down the stretch there. Uh, in hindsight, probably could have done that and should have done that. But uh, we wanted to be go with the experienced guy in week one. If Nick can continue to grow and build and learn, then we'll get him in there because he does have a lot of potential and a big leg. But um, Joe right now is a little bit more consistent. Over to the right, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Ryan, I know you've, uh, you've got some scrimmages, so you've got at least a walkthrough. But you just didn't call plays for the first time in like five years. Um, 
how were you how were you out there? How did it feel not calling plays? Were there things that maybe you were able to get to that you didn't necessarily have to do in the past? Like just walk us through yeah, you've I been don't doing know. something for five years. So I, I don't know what the film will show, but I felt like I was like shaking over there, like I was like um you know, I I think again Chip is great because Chip knows what he wants to get done. He's got a long term vision about what he wants to establish, what he wants his offense to look like. And, you know, in, in my mind, like, you know, I want to score 50 right now and just, you know, um, but, you know, when you're running the ball, you know, that, that takes work. You have to work through, you know, what we saw a little bit in the first half. And, you know, when you have younger guys in there and you're pushing through that, I mean, it, it's not just going to happen overnight. You've got to push through those things. He understands that. He's got great experience in that. So, um, you know, I, I thought, you know, he, he did a nice job of, you know, staying poised in there, sticking with what he wanted to get done. Um, there's still a lot of back and forth, you know, in terms of all of us talking uh, during the game. But uh, overall, I thought he called a good game and, um, and and established what he wants to establish. Let's get that on film. Let's figure out where, where we go next week. We're going to do two more for Coach. Over to the left, Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, defensive line, uh, you guys got a lot of pressure last year, didn't always get home. Yeah. Five sacks, ten tackles for a loss, I think is what it is. Just what did you make of, of those guys and you know, getting to the, the finish line, so to speak? Being disruption, being disruptive, or being dominant are two different things, I guess, right? And and you know, no, being I mean, yes. um, somebody who's making sacks and getting TFLs, that's that's a lot more than being disruptive, and and that's what we're looking for, and that's the potential that we have. And but one thing again, it's, it's like on offense, when, when you go out there kind of looking for that and pressing for those type of plays, uh, you can get yourself out of whack, and, and you have to just trust the defense. You got to trust the technique that, that Coach Johnson is is teaching, and, and those plays come when you when you're not pressing. You got to play loose. You got to trust your teammates, and, and they'll come. And they did today. And and some of those plays were just plays, just flat out effort. The second part, again, I use Caden for an example. You know, it wasn't the rush move; it was the counter back because someone flushed the pocket and he came from behind. So you never know how that's going to shake. You never know which way the line's going to slide how deep the drop's going to be. You just got to trust your technique and go. And, um, you know, again, if we can continue on that, that path of um, being disruptive in terms of creating TFLs but being dominant and getting sacks, that can be big. And final question for Coach Dave Holmes, uh, WSYX. Uh, Ryan, earlier this week you said you make assumptions in camp and then week one you learn maybe you weren't right about everything. I'm curious, looking ahead to week two, is there something – you were surprised by something you need to work on. What's your assumption as you head into week two? I think, again, I'm going to get on it and figure out who graded out champion. Again, for us, grading out a champion is grading over 80%. Um, figure out what that looks like, um, you know, in terms of who did, who didn't. You know, really make sure that I'm saying this the right way before I just kind of make assumptions afterwards. But, um, no, I, I think overall the bottom line coming out of the game is I thought we played hard. I thought that we got into a rhythm in the second half, played looser, played aggressive. I felt we were a little bit uptight early on and pressed a little bit. You know, that's that's kind of how I feel. But again, we'll take a look at the film and go from there. Great. Coach, thank Thanks, you very guys. much. Yep.